this is your first Vogue cover. Yes. That is exciting. How was the shoot with Mario? It was really fun. It was quite energetic because I had to do lots of... We were kind of going for an Isadora Duncan meets Patti Smith thing. And so it involved lots of um, jumping and wind. And but that's kind of good for me because it kind of keeps your energy going. So I got to just run around a lot. And what did you wear? Did you have much input to the outfit? Mario was very much involved in what to wear. And, um, you know, luck luckily most of the... Well, all of the stuff that was pulled I really loved. So sort of an easy choice, you know, everything. I really liked everything. And had you met Mario before? It looks on the shoot of the film that you knew each other quite well. Yeah, we met a couple of times, actually. And he's shot me for the photos for the Met Ball. And um, he's just a really amazing <laughs> character. And he's so kind of gregarious and outgoing. It's kind of hard not to be friendly with Mario. Did you have an idea before they shot you for Vogue of what you thought you might look like? No, I didn't know. I was really like, I had no idea what they kind of where they were going to go with it. It was really exciting. Um, fashion seems to be quite a big part of your life. Has it always been? Have you always been interested? Yeah, I've definitely always, you know, I was always in the dressing up box when I was a kid and constantly, um, you know, it's, it was all kind of about fantasy and the romance and always in and out of charity shops and vintage shops when I was a teenager and going to lots of, you know, going to like club nights where you were only allowed in if you were completely 100% dressed up and swap parties and things like that. So it's always been a big part of my life. And so when you go on stage to perform, do you, you know, how important is the outfit about, you know, what part does it play in the performance? It's hugely important because I think it's like, it's a massive um, tool for you as a performer, you know, what you wear, but you have to wear, for me, I think being comfortable as well is a huge part because I move around so much. There's a type of chiffon that I've kind of worn quite a lot, which is so light that every movement you make, it kind of makes its own dance behind it. And I think thinking it in, in like more balletic terms with an outfit is useful because you think about the shapes that you're going to make and the, the movements you're going to make on stage. And I've noticed that on Facebook, on your Facebook page, you sometimes post "Today I'm wearing" shots of, of your outfit every day. What yeah. Inspired that. Well, I think we got we got really like uh, we really love looking at the Vogue ones. So I think. Um, I'm really bad at doing stuff on the internet, and so sort of for the on like more online community, I thought maybe it'd be because I'm really like I'm, I'm kind of like a bit technologically defunct, so I thought it'd be a nice way to kind of keep in touch with the fans without having to get too technical. Um, I saw you perform the other day at the Chanel show, which was extraordinary in Paris. How did that come about? How have you started working with Karl Lagerfeld? Um, just through kind of getting well, I got to perform in the sh at Coco's apartment, amazingly at Blake's handbag launch which was just incredible it was just me and a harp and he wanted an underwater theme for his show and I was talking about some of the underwater themes in my record and so he kind of we were having this chat and then all of a sudden he was like yes wouldn't it be nice if you came down on like a wire and seemed like you were floating and we must get loads of white harps and I was thinking what where is this and I kind of thought he was joking and then after and then he kind of put his hand on mine and was like Yes, so we'll do it. I'm glad we talked. And I was like, what? Oh, and I didn't... It, it would, he's kind of... The way he does things is so kind of conversational and it's, he's inspired very quickly. And then all of a sudden the next day, I, I was like, I think I might be singing at the Chanel show, but I wasn't quite sure. And the next day we got the call from Chanel. And so then I knew it was real. But the way it happened was very much... <laughs> Spontaneous. Spontaneous. Which designers, which other designers are you particularly interested in or do, or do you have favourites? I'm, I love Valentino. I think every time I see a collection of theirs, I would just would love to wear ev you know, everything, everything on it. And um, obviously YSL. Um, and this is Hermione to Paula, actually, um, who I've known for years. He's been like a friend of mine. And her stuff is incredible. So I'm quite happy to be wearing her. And so writing this album how how big was the pressure because of the success of the last how did you kind of take it on to, to start again it was funny because the first album was so such a high pressure situation anyway it was like because I got that award before I made it and so it was it was like I was having my first media exposure first interviews this award like being like oh we hope I, we hope the record's good and I was like oh god me too <laughs> and um you know it was really kind of it was like a baptism of fire. So I think this time around, having been through all that, it was almost an easier process.
Now, we asked our Twitter followers to send in questions for you. If you had to choose one Desert Island song of your own or anybody else's, could you choose one? Probably be Otis Redding's Try a Little Tenderness, because I think that's my favourite song of all time. Who would you most love to do a collaboration with? I'd really like to do some work with Jamie XX, that would be fun. Who has been your favourite ever cover girl of British Vogue? Do you have one? Um, I thought, uh, I think Agnes always looks really beautiful on the cover. Somebody said, you lucky thing interviewing her. Could you ask her what her favourite decade is, fashion-wise? Ah, I'm kind of going through a mix of 70s and 20s at the moment. So it's like New York in the 70s and London, in the twen London and Paris in the 20s. Finally, please, will you talk about the meaning of ceremonials, the lyrics and the inspiration? The title kind of came from this, there's this art installation I saw a couple of years ago, um, which was like this 70s sort of Super 8 film of all these like psychedelic hippie monk processional thing, like loads of them all in these different colours and it kind of had this sort of processional thing to it and all, it was all about different colours and these crazy masks and red balloons and loads of different colours, pasta and ch children dressed up in these weird outfits and it was kind of really, it kind of reminded me of the coquettes and I'm, I'm obsessed with them as well and it was called Ceremonial. When it came to making this record I think there's so much to do with there's quite, it's quite a lot, there's quite a lot of almost church-like sounds on it, like the organ and there's sort of, there's a, seems like there's some sort of conflict going on within it and, you know, that sense of release and catharsis and I'm always kind of attracted to quite reverential sounds and, you know, it, the, the idea of kind of ritual and any kind of ceremony, be it kind of like a sacrificial or celebratory or, you know, wedding, funeral, I think I'm kind of always really attracted to that kind of thing and um, the idea of kind of dressing up to go on stage and the state of mind you get into is kind of quite ceremonial, it's, it's very ceremonial for me anyway and um, so it kind of all fit together.